Zolanguela o Veteronugo, a Rua Itabua, a Guido Talitaina na Barrongo e na Bula FM, na Mandua na Serre. Bula! A Langonoa, e Lutoca, do Talitaca na Bula FM, vai ter na Mandua na Serre. Nem Bula vem cá, na Regengosa, na Bula FM, na Enacassi. Na Langosa, na Mandua Ativio, na Bula FM, na Mandua na Serre, no Sur. Nem Bula vem cá, na Langosa, Jerry, e a Melambasa, a do Barrongo e na Bula FM. Bula FM, number two in the series. In the news tonight, McKee takes on check over comments. Fiji again takes leading role in climate fight. And man reappears over Nandi family deaths. From the studios of FBC Subaru, Jackie Spade. Flying Fijians coach John McKee has fired back at his Australian counterpart Michael Checker, who accused the national mentor of being two-faced. Checker had claimed that after the 39-21 win by Wallabies, he and McKee had a great post-match conversation. But he was disappointed that at no point did McKee tell him he was going to refer Wallabies winger Reese Hodge for a sighting. The next day, Hodge was cited for a dangerous no-arms tackle on Fiji flanker Peveliato, who was concussed and didn't return to play and missed the game against Uruguay today. Karoi Tandalala has more. Following this controversial moment, this comment of Michael Chica against John McKee has left the rugby world divided. Probably the most disappointing thing was the Fijians, you know what I mean? I think after the game we had a lot of good, was, you know, a lot of friendly discussion with myself and the coach. He talked to our other coaches. There was no mention of anything, and then to get a referral from them in the way it was referred, I thought, especially, yeah, that, that was really disappointing. I don't, I don't find that, the way that they brought that in the spirit of the game at all, which is something you, you, you know from Fiji, you know, so the coaching staff, I was really quite surprised with the way they brought their own referral post-match. Um, yeah, that, that would have been a little disappointing to me from a spirit of rugby point of view, you know, that you talk to... I prefer they come up to me and get upset with me if they're really upset about it, not to then talk to me in that nice sort of friendly chitty chat way and then go behind your back and put in a referral. don't think I've ever referred anyone. With all the attention on the match against Uruguay earlier today, McKee is saying the cheek of Chica to suggest that Fiji was disappointing was his opinion. Uh, maybe Michael's checkers views of the uh, of what's within the spirit of the game are a little different to some other people. It's you know not for me to to understand exactly what he meant by that comment. Mickey adding that head injuries was something not to fiddle around with. So, we, we, you know, we've already lost out and, it, and it's the judicial process that will decide whether, whether it was um, a legal tackle or, or a head injury contact. He says they have done what they thought was correct because Fiji was the team that suffered. We lost um, a player who was, who was nearly the most influential player on the park at, at that point in the game for the, for the rest of the game and, and because of a head injury he can't play in this game either. He's, he's still in the, in the return to play protocols. It is also being said that World Rugby told one of its leading consultants, Ross Tucker, to take down his red card tweet that has caused furore over the Wallaby wing's controversial hit. Corey Tandulala, FBC News. Fiji continues to punch above its weight in trying to get global attention on the climate change crisis. Apart from the main climate change summit in New York, Prime Minister Vurenge Mbaini Marama held side meetings with other world leaders on the issue. Ali Kimbia with the story. Speaking to world leaders during the Nature and People's event, Vurenge Mbaini Marama has further clarified Fiji's broader response to climate change. We have identified the opportunity to plant around 30 million trees in the next 10 to 15 years and also have a plan to monetize the stored carbon in our thriving and expanding forests and mangroves. We will seek to leverage the international marketplace to provide funding for these efforts using the highest standards and practices. Baini Marama also launched Fiji's Relocation Trust Fund and says world leaders will need to act now as they come wait for the communities to drown due to enroaching tides. We need a holistic approach. We need adequate resources and we need it now. Our new trust fund is uh, uh, undeniably one of the most effective ways that we can help our communities adapt to climate change. Biden Marama is calling on world leaders to support small Pacific island nations as they undertake the enormous task of combating climate change. Ali Kimbia, FBC News.
The commitment by small island nations to fight against climate change has not gone unnoticed on the world stage. At the closing segment of the Climate Action Summit, the small island nations were applauded for their continued efforts to battle for their survival in the climate crisis. Eleanor Tarangaiview reports. Action by action, the tide is turning. Amongst those at the front line of the fight to reduce the impacts of climate change and to keep temperature levels at 1.5 degrees are these small island nations. Their commitment has not gone unnoticed. I was deeply moved by many examples of inspiring leadership from countries that have done the least to contribute to the climate crisis. Small island states together committed to carbon neutrality and to move to 100% renewable energy by 2030. The summit, which ended last night, saw 77 countries committing to cut greenhouse gas emissions to net zero by 2050, while 70 countries announced plans to boost the national action plans by 2020. We have submitted our long-term strategy to achieve net zero emissions before 2050. We are nearing completion of our enhanced NDC. We enacted uh, an environmental and climate levy, issued a green bond, and are using innovative financing solutions to fund these plans. My government has submitted the resolution to our parliament to declare a national climate crisis, including to highlight the special circumstances we face as a low-lying coral, coral atoll nation. There were also commitments made to double contributions to the Green Climate Fund and increase efforts to phase out coal. The Climate Action Summit was a launch pad for more ambitious actions in the lead up to the 25th Conference of the Parties in Chile in December. Eleanor Turangaiviu, FBC News. Prime Minister Vorenge Mbaini Marama has urged his Indian counterpart Narendra Modi to reduce India's heavy reliance on coal. Baini Marama made this statement during a meeting with Modi in New York. Baini Marama says just as the world looks to India for leadership in the fight to climate change, so too do the citizens of some of the most climate vulnerable nations on earth. Given India's global presence, Baini Marama says Modi can be a powerful force for good in the world and the Pacific are keen to partner with India in an expanded engagement for the benefit of all our people. New Zealand resident Mohammed Rahish Isuf, alleged to have murdered a Nandi family, made his first appearance in the Lautoka High Court this morning. The state has requested for time to file information and disclosures. Isuf is charged with five counts of murder and one count of attempted murder. It's alleged that on the 25th and 26th of August, Isuf murdered carpenter Nirmal Kumar, his 54-year-old wife Usha Devi, their 34-year-old daughter Nileshni Kajal, and her two daughters Sana, aged 11, and 8-year-old Samara. The bodies of the Lengalenga family were discovered in the Nausori highlands in Nandi. A one-year-old baby was also found crawling at the scene. Isuf has been further remanded. The matter has been adjourned to October 11th. Up ahead, non-receipt businesses under the radar and late screen cases on the decline. Details after the break. Bula, I'm Miri. I'm from Lotoka and I love Gold FM because they play all my classic hits. Hi, my name is Fiona from Tavua and I love listening to Gold FM, only the classic hits. Hi, I'm Ini from Rakiraki. I love Gold FM, only the classic hits. Gold FM, only the classic hits. The Fiji Revenue and Customs Service has raised the red flag on some small businesses and restaurants that do not offer receipts to their customers. Beauty salons have also come under the radar as another business that often doesn't issue receipts. Kuroi Tandalala reports, investigations into complaints lodged by Fijians is ongoing. FRCS chief executive says the onus is also on customers to demand receipts when they purchase items from retailers. We have uh, had a few cases where we have we have gone to the extent of prosecuting and they've been prosecuted and fined and uh, there has been you know, one restaurant uh, that where you know we actually you know there was no receipt issued you know it was just a uh, order that was issued and then we investigated and we recovered some substantial amount of uh, tax discrepancies from them. 
The consumer watchdog has also received similar complaints and beauty salons have topped the list. That is one of the common areas where we receive a lot of complaints from because what happens is, uh, you know, the, the ladies, they spend so much. They spend as much as $300 for their hairdo. However, they are not issued with receipts. So something goes wrong, they are not able to go and seek redress. The Consumer Council has received hundreds of complaints of failure to issue receipts, which add up to a substantial amount. Three years, we have received 280 complaints on non-issuance of receipts, and collectively, these complaints were valued at $55,822. For businesses, any sale above $10 requires a receipt. Consumer Council Chief Executive Sima Shandil explains that any transactions below $10, whether it be a restaurant, a clothing retailer, or a hardware store, customers still have the right to demand for receipts. Kore Tandulala, FBC News. The Land Transport Authority came under fire yesterday after its staff were unable to provide answers to some of the questions asked by the members of the Standing Committee on Public Accounts. The LTA staff provided submissions on its 2016-2017 audit report on statutory authorities to the committee. But due to the absence of the chief executive, they were unable to clarify some of the issues raised. Another key issue highlighted by the committee was the behavior of LTA infringement officers. And he start doing the same thing. What will happen to that man with me? The team from LTA said that their CEO had a work commitment and was unable to come for the submission. However, they assured the members that they will relay the outcomes to him. The ratio of people coming in late for cancer screening is dropping. Health Minister Dr. Ifedemi Wangai Nambete confirms outreach efforts by the government, NGOs and the public is working as more Fijians are now being tested early. Edwin Nunn reports. Fundraisers such as this one at Jacks of Fiji go a long way in assisting Fijians afford cancer treatment where local health facilities don't suffice. I want to assure us today that we have for the majority of treatment of cancers. There are areas in which we lack, but there are many countries in the world that lack in certain areas. Dr. Wangai Nambete adds these events are a means to reach more Fijians and years of hard work is starting to pay off with a visible decrease in the rate of late detection. Before it was more, now it's lesser and lesser. Why? Because we have awareness such as this. We have a, a critical mass of doctors and nurses and health professionals. Asinath Andriso is a cancer survivor who is hoping that her story will inspire others to action. My ignorance almost cost me my life and my loved ones, but I thank God that I managed to present myself to the hospital even though it was late, I presented late, but I'm thankful for God, I'm thankful to God for granting me another second chance to life so I can, you know, so I can become a better wife, a better person in life. The health minister has called on all Fijians to get behind the Fiji Cancer Society because of the critical support services it provides, as well as counselling and funding. Edwin Nand, FBC News. The Fiji Broadcasting Corporation's business partners and clients were today given a detailed overview of the new innovative digital marketing platforms they can use for advertising. Chief Executive Ria Said Kayum says the digital space is now the new niche for marketing as it reaches a large audience without any hassle. With smartphone user base growing phenomenally, FBC is also continuously looking at innovative means to engage with its audience with ease. But a lot of people are reading less, and, uh, and, and that's why you know, the digital market is, uh, is, is, is developing so quickly because people are on the run, they don't have much time, they're looking at things on their phones, and we are trying to sort of develop this and keep pace with it, and at the same time share our experiences and our successes with our clients and our partners as well. Um, our customers included are now digitizing. Um, I believe that uh, this mode uh, is going to be beneficial for us, and uh, because a lot of people now are doing away from just reading and uh, the aids are more eye-catchy, so it is going to appeal to them more, which is going to benefit us as a business. And Kuroi joins us now with the latest in business. Thank you, Jackie. Coming up after the break, boom expected in data business.
and in growing Fiji, vandalism acts worry municipal councils. Stay with us. Hi, I'm Shamiza. And I'm Salma. We're from Nandi and we love Michi FM because it's fun. My name is Rajni Talata and I'm from Vatulaloba. Uh, and we listen to FM Sunta hai because it's hot. Hi, my name is Vinita. I'm from Lambasa. I love li listening to Mirchi FM. It's number one. We are Sagar Reddy. We are in school, we are in the house. Leading business Digicel Fiji says the data business will be booming with new fees in place from October 1st. Intel recently slashed its fees after a review was carried out by the Fijian Competition and Consumer Commission, plummeting what was a $40,000 fee for their line rental for 10 gigabytes to now only $640. Maggie Boyle with the story. Access to the internet is expected to be much more affordable from next month. It brings Fiji in line with international benchmark conditions. Data is a precious commodity now. In fact, it's the commodity. Uh, we think about in past years, oil was the commodity, now data is. Head of Digital Fiji says the fee cut of more than $39,000 will definitely benefit Fijian consumers. So as we enter into the digital age and we have digital transformation happening around us, it's important that we have the right cost models uh, that, that are applied to that, that growth and that commodity. Meanwhile, heading into the festive season, Punjar and Sons launched their Diwali promotion. We have been running with um, Digicel for the last uh, four years, and uh, this is the fourth year. Uh, we have this uh, promotion in the market. Uh, Red Cow sells uh, quite well uh, during Diwali. Digital Fiji are expected to announce new data packages from next week. Maggie Boyle, FBC News. Vision Investment Limited has made a profit before tax of $27 million for the financial year ending 31st March. Chief Executive P.L. Munasinghe says the group has exceeded profits of previous years by 19% as it made tax profit of $22.8 million for the 2017-2018 financial year. This year uh, we believe it's going to be a challenging year for various reasons. One is, uh, I mean, it's a well-known fact that uh, you know, the economy is uh, softening a little bit. And the RBA forecasts have revised their uh, sort of growth forecast downwards. And where we are concerned, uh, duty, import duty went up on uh, things like smartphones, electrical goods, and motor, uh, motor vehicles less than 2,500 cc. Companies that fall under Vision Investment Limited include Courts, Sports World, Vision Motors, and Mahogany Industries. Yeah, Sinifa from HFC Bank is here and the U.S. and New Zealand dollars trading markets are facing some issues. The U.S. dollar trembled overnight as the U.S. House of Representatives moved to open a formal impeachment inquiry against President Donald Trump while weak U.S. consumer confidence data heightened worries over the Sino-U.S. trade row. Meanwhile, New Zealand's official rate remains at 1.0 percent. Employment is around its maximum sustainable level and inflation remains within their target range, but below the 2% midpoint. Global trade and other political tensions remain elevated and continue to subdue the global growth outlook, dampening demand for New Zealand's goods and services. Business confidence remains low in New Zealand, partly reflecting policy uncertainty and low profitability in some sectors and is impacting investment decisions. Consequently, New Zealand interest rates can be expected to be low for longer. That's all for now from HFC Bank, Vinaka. Here are today's exchange rates as set this morning. It has been a mixed day for the Fiji dollar, which rose against the Chinese yuan and U.S. greenback, the Kina and Euro, but slipped against the Aussie and the Japanese yen. Looking at the commodities market, oil was down about a dollar and a half at $56 per barrel. Gold rose $13 to $1,533 per ounce, and silver closed up at $1,866 per ounce. In growing Fiji, the misuse and vandalizing of public facilities is a worrying concern for the Suva City Council. 
Local Government Minister Pramila Kumar says a lot of money is invested into improving infrastructures in towns and cities, but the people continue to abuse them. The new Special Administrators team will be spearheading the work in addressing this issue. I know in the past we've heard so many times um, Super City Council doing its level best with the resources it has in, in refurbishing toilets, toilet facilities or gardens. But what do they find at the end of the day? People have taken away the taps, they've taken away the system pan, everything, lights and so forth. And even plants, they try and dig the plants and take it away. That's it from Business Tonight. Sports is up next with Jamie. Thanks, Kuro. And good evening in Sports Tonight. Rugby refs put on notice. And Samoa starts with a win. Details after the break. Radio Fiji One. Welcome back. First up, uh, Fiji's second pool match at the Rugby World Cup 2019 ended a few minutes ago with Uruguay recording a historic 30-27 to win of our flying Fijians. You can read uh, more about the match on the FEC News website. That's fec.com. That Meanwhile, in an unusual move, rugby bosses have called out the performances of referees at the World Cup. Officials have been highly criticized for a number of inconsistencies and leniency on foul play. This from PVNZ. A moment they had All Blacks fans up in arms. Trotty is there quickly and Trotty gets a rash. Surely that's a professional foul. Jerome Gar says his option not to punish South Africa with more than a penalty. One of a number of refereeing decisions that's forced world rugby to act. The governing body last night released this damning statement saying, The opening weekend of Rugby World Cup 2019 were not consistently of the standards set by world rugby and themselves. World Rugby conceded there had been initial challenges which have impacted decision making, but added they have every confidence in the team moving forward in the tournament. Dorofiev fakes once and then sets up his captain. Last night's Paul A clash between Samoa and Russia added more fuel to the fire, just hours after the statement. There is a direct contact on the end. Yeah. Oh. Okay, which means it's a red card. Oh, wow. Well. Roman Poit talked out of giving Rayleigh lower red card by the TMO, but he later dished out a further two yellow cards in an ill-disciplined Samoa win. 124 running metres from Alapati this evening, and he's not done with yet. Alapati Leua gets on the outside of two, that's a ripper! Elsewhere, Wallabies winger Reese Hodge will appear at a judicial hearing in Tokyo for his dangerous tackle during Australia's opening win over Fiji. The incident was missed by the referee and referred by Fiji, while more examples have surfaced online, showing infringement seemingly ignored by officials. That includes two off-the-ball incidents involving All Blacks Karen Reid and Joe Moody. There's a judicial system that's been in place for a long time with rugby and whether you like it or not, they've, you know, they've been uh, pretty staunch on what they've been about. So if it gets past those guys, then move on. We're not judged by social media. The World Cup's referees are now officially on notice. Samoa made a winning start to their Rugby World Cup campaign, beating Russia 34 points to 9 with a bonus point try. Wingers Alipate Lehua and Ed Fido were the stars of the side, scoring two tries in the match. Here are the highlights. Kushnarev thinking about the drop goal. He's got a good strike on it. He's landed it. Louis for Samoa. Nice transfer for Yawani. And they're trying to organise this more lovely ball from Nuiya. What a line that is from Fido. Oh, that's trademark Samoa. And my Williams to Efu. Leula. Simple. Two for Fido. 
Samoa have found themselves. Wants him over the top, Leoa. Looking for a strong finish. That's a massive fend. What a finish it is! Not quite. The final act. And Samoa. Come through a testing night. A couple of yellow cards in the first 40, but ultimately on the ball in Pool A with a bonus point and a dangerous, dangerous contender. I just spoke to them and told him to stay in the blue. And what the blue was is a uh, calm head um, and, and stay focused on the job. And I was pretty proud that the boys, uh, you know, stayed composed and, you know, they didn't let it try and so really proud of the boys. Fijian Zevu Reese continues to make a statement for the All Blacks each time he plays for the world champions. So much so that he's been now being touted as potentially the best wing in the current All Blacks setup. This from News Hub. Flying from Tokyo to Oita with the All Blacks to prepare for Canada simply wasn't on Sevu Reese's itinerary earlier this year. You know, I didn't think they would come this far. Never mind rookie nerves, suddenly he's a key to the All Blacks World Cup chances and was the spark Just against like South Africa. Race, race. You seem like a confident person, a person who doesn't really question himself, who just runs on instinct. Well, yeah, I, mean, I think that's the only way to get over it, you know, it's just to, just to go, just to you know, yeah, run or whatever you do. It's a big reason why he's in the team, because he backs himself. Sever seems like the kind of guy who can give a team a lift. Oh, you know, he can bring it in something out of nothing, can't he? If Reese hadn't lost a contract in Ireland because of an assault charge last year, he might have been playing for Fiji. Forced to stay in New Zealand, the Waikato and Crusaders winger kept being courted by Fiji coach John McKee. You know, I showed him my plan and what I wanted to do with rugby and stuff, and that was in the black jersey. It was his dream to emulate fellow Fijian All Blacks Joe Rokothoko and Sitaveni Suvivatu when he shifted from the islands to Hamilton Boys High as a teenager. What impresses attack coach Ian Foster is the 22-year-old has the mistake-free rugby smarts to match his brilliance. He's a smart rugby player, and I mean, don't be fooled by um, the, 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 the little magician stuff. You know, he puts a lot of work into his game. Although Reese admits he's still learning the All Black systems. Especially as wingers, you know, you sort of have to be in the right place, you know, where you're 50 50, where you, you know, need to come up or stay back. Could help out my fullback even more. A complete Sevu Reese is a scary proposition for opposition. Brand new enthralling vision has emerged of the All Blacks' key moments in their win over the Springboks at the Rugby World Cup. An innovative camera system has captured the action in a never-seen-before way to add an incredible dimension to viewing sport. This again from TVNZ. It's the vision that's got rugby fans talking. George Bridges' stunning try against the Springboks through the eyes of Cannon's new free viewpoint video system inside Yokohama Stadium. Trotty there again. Back for Moanga. Now Barrett. Barrett. Barton Barrett to Bridge. What a try that is. That try showing like that, you know, just the most magnificent try. There's another whole level to it when you can view it like that. This is what we actually saw of that All Blacks try in the broadcast on Saturday night. That vision is then enhanced 24 hours later through the new technology. So how does it work? More than 30 cameras are set up around the ground, each with a different angle of play. They can zoom in on certain elements that are later packaged together to bring an entirely new perspective on the action. What is really impressive with this one is the scale of it. You know, doing that in a stadium the size of that one is really significant and it looks really cool. But could we ever see it during a live broadcast? No, I have every confidence that it will. I mean, we're seeing examples of this being done with an iPhone or a mobile phone. Now you can't use those for broadcast, but if you can do it there, um, it won't take long. It begs the question of what other innovation we should expect in our sports viewing in the coming years. Ian Taylor of Animation Research, who's pioneered a number of elements of technological broadcast advancements, says this is just the beginning for all sports. We're talking about putting stuff on bats, we're talking about putting stuff on cameras on players while they play, and because those things are getting smaller and smaller, so they're easy to do. So expect more of this. Anton Leonard the pools for the 2019 Oceania Sevens tournament have been drawn. Defending uh, men's champion Fiji is in pool A with New Zealand, New Caledonia, New Way, Newcomers Japan, 
Oceania Rugby Competition's manager Wayne Schuster says they're excited about the inclusion of the Oceania Rugby Deaf Tournament, which will feature teams from Fiji, Papua New Guinea and Samoa. It's most an occasion and, um, for us to have the Oceania Rugby Sevens Deaf um, competition as part of the Oceania Rugby and it's, you know, this is not going to be a one-off concept. This is something that we'll continue to have in the Oceania Sevens um, um, competitions and we really look forward to that. The new teams at this year's tournament include the Canadian women's side and the Japan men's and women's teams. The Vanuatu women's team will also be featuring in the tournament their first international rugby outing. The Oceania Sevens will be played from the 7th to the 9th of November. That's it from sports and new media. After the break, take a look at why experts are warning you to refrain from using free Wi-Fi at airports. Details coming up. Umesh Chandra, our Kanta Chandra, my wife, hai. Hum Radio Fiji to both Sunday se sunta hai, bahut acha program, number one radio. Kumar Sami Naikar, Bongo Alibu Latoka, Radio Fiji 2 me, Purana Gana lage, hame bahut acha lage. Kumar, Nakafi me rata, Radio Fiji 2 sunta hai. Radio Fiji 2, Desh ki dharkan. Cybersecurity experts are once again warning travellers to think twice before logging into free Wi-Fi at the airport. Here's why it shouldn't be done. Despite numerous warnings from cybersecurity experts, travelers often connect their devices to free Wi Fi networks at airports. Airports are ideal places for hackers since there are dozens, if not hundreds, of possible targets. According to Forbes, the latest Norton Wi Fi risk report found that travelers don't think twice before connecting to a network, and that 53% of the thousands of people surveyed couldn't tell the difference between a secure network or one that isn't. Another report found that American Americans are fine with accepting risks to their online privacy out of convenience. CNBC says this may allow hackers to install malicious software to devices, steal passwords and login information, and download other data such as emails. While most of the country's airports offer free Wi-Fi, some charge a fee. But even those pose serious threats because they ask users to transmit personal information through an insecure network. Experts tell Forbes to use your smartphone's personal hotspot when you you can or look into a virtual personal network or VPN, which should only cost about five bucks a month. It's weather time with Angie. Hello there and welcome to the weather world. The weather in Japan looks quite humid, so it must have been a tough challenge to beat the heat. A good match between Fiji and Uruguay. Congratulations to the Uruguay team. We're also aligned to long spells of sunshine and it's quite thrilling to have dry surroundings. Now moving to the west, sunshine is not settling for any chance of rain. Humidity is still on top with no backing down. Eastwards from Pakhaba to Suva, the morning started off as a bit drippy with sunny spells in the picture. And up north, everything is nice and bright up here. At sea, southeast winds 15 to 20 knots, moderate to rough seas. For the tides, low tide at 9.28 p.m. with high tide at 3.41 a.m. Sunrise will be at 5.53. For tomorrow, we are nearing the weekend. How fascinating. Tomorrow's stems, Suva will be quite warm. Apart from Suva, Nandi and Lotoka will hit highs of 22. And looking further onto Friday, it looks to a gorgeous day. Oh well, at least it will be a Friday. And that's all from the FBC Weather World. Jackie. Thanks so much for that, Angie. In Fiji and Pulse, we asked, who is your favorite player in the Rugby World Cup so far? My favorite uh, rugby player playing in the World Cup is Frank Lomani because he's a hard worker and he's from South South. I like Severis, who plays for the All Blacks because he's a, he's a try scoring machine. My favorite player is uh, Severan Rantra from uh, South South. My favorite player is Dominic Kuwanga de Buruto. He's the best captain as well. My best player in the Flying Fijian squad is Simran Randra because he's really a good winger. 
I like Sam Matavesi's style of playing, and that's why he's my favorite player. Recapping the main stories for tonight, McKee lashes out at Cheko over comments, Fiji takes leading role in climate fight, and man reappears over Nandi family deaths. For these stories and others, tune in daily to our sister radio station, Gold FM. Our poll question this week we're asking, should match officials who make blunders at Rugby World Cup be severely reprimanded? Visit our FBC website to answer. And our shot of the day, a perfect day to be at the beachside, sent in by Patricio Tuvo. You can send us newsworthy pictures and videos on email fbcnews at fbc.com.fj via Facebook page FBC News, via Twitter page at FBC underscore news, or simply hashtag FBC News. That was the FBC News for tonight. From the team and I, stay safe. Good night. Today FM, Today FM rocks. Bula I'm Linda Form, I started Suva. I love listening to Today FM because they play latest music and they rock. Hi, my name is Asnate, I'm from Ba, I love listening to Today FM, Today FM rocks. Bula, I'm Makereta from Nandi, we love listening to Today FM. Here in Nandi, it rocks. Hi, I'm Shania, I'm from Lotoka, and I love Today FM and it rocks. Today's hit music on Today FM.